Welcome to the Builder a Brand podcast interview series. In this series, we will sit down and speak with entrepreneurs who have gone through the grind and who are continuing to grind day in and day out. We will discuss their journeys into business ownership, the paths they took, the challenges they faced, what got them through those challenges, and of course, we're going to talk business. More specifically, we're going to talk about their business and their entrepreneurial journey. Again, I am your host, Jeremy Patton, and you are tuning in to the Building a Brand interview podcast series. And, and, and just the last point to it is like, and that's why I created the Dreamers Never Die that I got on right now, is that I truly believe that we need to stop as a society, as a whole, as adults, and to, we need to stop telling young people that certain things are unrealistic mm-hmm. because it creates them their ability to only think small to only see what's in front of them when it's bigger than just the dream right so the dreamers never die is bigger than just the dream it's the ability to have a vision Mm -hmm. on like how what you want in life right what you want to have what you want to achieve what you want to do so it's bigger than just the dream and even i always told i've recently um been shifting telling people that it's not that the dream is is impossible. It's that young people just have to see what it's going to take, right? So even young people that tell me they want to go to the NBA or NFL, I use this example because in our communities, you know, that's the norm. And NBA, NFL, mm-hmm. entertainer, people will be like, "Oh, have a backup because only X one percent or a little percentage actually make it to the professionals." It's like, no, like we should be telling them. Hey, that's great. If you want to have that, this is what kids that make it to the NBA do. Right. They get up at 4 a.m., they run hills, they they put up a thousand shots, mm-hmm. um, they practice in the offseason, they they don't they don't do this, they don't do that. Mm-hmm. Are you willing to put in that work? And if you are, I want to invest in that dream, right? Yeah. So now you're putting in perspective. And if they're like, whoa, that's too much, then it's like, okay, well. Now let's shift your dream. You love basketball. You love football. You love being an entertainer. Like, what else can we do that keeps you in that in that yes. field of interest? Right. So again, they're not they're not thinking small. They're not thinking because I don't want to do this that being in this area is impossible. No, you can become a sports agent. Mm-hmm. You can become a coach. You can become a sports analyst. Yes. Um, and you, you can do all these different things. Right. You could become a manager for an entertainment, like you can do all these different things. And I truly feel like, why would I tell a young person that they can't do something when I see people that look like them doing it every day? All the time, every single day at high levels. At high levels. So it's like, but it requires high level commitment at an early age. And if you're willing to do that, then we're talking right now. I'm not killing your dream. I might reshape it. If we realize that the dream that you want requires too much of you that you're not re- willing to give, mm-hmm. but I'm not killing it and saying that you can't be something right. Or you won't make it. It's like, no, you can make it, but this is what's going to take. So I also think like as, uh, as, as people with children, um, it's important for you to never tell out at a young age, they can't do something or they won't be this yeah. because it just creates limited belief and limited thinking, which limited thinking is results in like in in misbehavior and in behavior that 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 pe- people do to be seen, right? Because yeah. when you're limited in your thought process, you're limited in in your in your decision making. You're not making the right decisions all the time. So, yeah, and I think you know to your point, like not only does that limit their beliefs and uh, alter their behavior as a, at a young age, but they carry that into adulthood too. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're really impacting uh, someone at a very young age for potentially the rest of their life, because the words that they heard at a young age was you can't, you can't do, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the, their dream is, you know, uh, and having that impact, implement on you as a youth like i said that they're still in a developing phase so as they develop as a young adult they carry that and it's deep rooted too and it mm-hmm. and it impacts 
it impacts their behavior as an adult, it impacts, you know, the decisions they make as an adult, their beliefs in themselves as an adult, you know, it's, it's a full circle. And then it, they pass that down to their children and then it's a whole nother, you know, cycle of that. So I, you know, I think making sure to tell parents, you know, don't, don't put those limitations on your children and, you know, because that's one of the worst things that you could potentially do. Mm -hmm. It's a domino effect and people don't understand, like they don't understand, like, like things you say and do around your children is, 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 is planting a seed, planting a field of, of whoever they're going to be based off of like who, what you're doing and what's happening in the community Mm -hmm. and what's happening at school. And that's why all these things do those three areas, if they're in sync, then school and, that's when that's yeah. when it happens. That's community, home, school. That's when yeah. the magic happens, right? Yeah. So my goal is to you know impact those three areas, and I'll do it through my services, speaking, training, consulting, um, workshops. Like I would yeah. love to do, ideally, do a workshop, um, you know, in the next year for parents um, on nice. on developing you know, relationships with their children, how how to engage with them, how to get them to talk to you about things that they only talk to their friends about, different things like that. Um, yeah. So it's like, it's big. It's like instilling fear is what a lot of parents, you know, focus on. It's like, I need my child to be afraid of me. And I know nah, I need, you just need them to respect you. Right. They respect you. They ain't going to do the stuff that, that you think that they won't do because they're afraid of you. Um, so yeah, man, like between that, um, I will say I I do have a book, um, coming out, uh, this fall and it's really going to connect with a lot of my messaging that I, that I've been doing. So I'm in the midst of writing a book, um, as well. Nice. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I definitely will, uh, keep, you know, I'm a, yeah, I'm following you. I'm gonna stay in the loop and I can't wait to and you release it. I can't wait to, you know, read it and check it out for sure. Nah, for sure, man. Yeah, so. Uh, so real quick, as far as your entrepreneurial journey, uh, did you always know that you wanted to go into entrepreneurship or what brought that that urge or that, that what brought that, you know, that out in you? Um, It kind of just like happened. Um, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Like I've always like at a young age, listen, how can I make money? I got a shovel. It's wintertime shoveling. How can I make money? I got a lawnmower. It's summertime cutting grass. How can I make money? I got a rake. It's fall. I'm raking leaves. Like I've always had that hustle mentality where it's like, listen, I'm going to find a way to, you know, make some money, feel good about hard work. I've always loved the feeling of, of, of a comp feeling of being accomplished after a hard days of work. Yeah. Um, so I've always loved that in compa- in combination with like being able to, you know, find ways to make my own money. Um, I didn't really have it, you know, all throughout college and it kind of just fell on my lap because again, it was just like, making videos on social media turned into like, oh, I can actually like turn this into a business because people mm. like what I what I have to say. Um and then from there it was just like uh for me it was like purposeful. Like just yeah. doing it, doing the work, um it just meant a lot. It meant a lot for me. And I just wanted to keep growing in it. And then I started learning the business side of things and how dope that is and nerve wracking it is yeah. um, and frustrating, but um, it's that definitely like, yeah, that combination is crazy. It's like, you're happy, you're frustrated and it's also confusing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, but like entrepreneurship never was like a goal for me or I didn't identify as entrepreneurship. I might identify the characteristics that I wanted. Yeah. Um, and then eventually it just turned into, again, 30 second videos to traveling the, uh, the country. OK, nice, nice. Now, how did you end up learning the business aspect of it? And were there any setbacks along your way? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I'm still learning the business aspect of it every day. Um, 
setbacks. Uh, you you there's never a point where you don't have a setback in your in business. But um, yeah, man, like the business side of things, like it was a lot of like my first two years, I made a lot of bad business decisions. Mm-hmm. Like from the financial piece to um, buying certain things to like not doing taxes to having to pay all this money back um, yeah. to even just like now it's just good business. Like the recent setback that I've had in the past year, I've done business with people I was close to or semi close to and they didn't produce the product or the result that I wanted. And then they yeah. like kind of go through. So learning about contracts, right? Yeah. Having contracts and, and and different things like that, um, you know, trademark and logo. And I think like the biggest lesson in business that I've learned is there's always more to learn, mm-hmm. right? Like and if you don't know, find a book. Like mm-hmm. our morning meetup, like we read books. Like there's there's a book out there for every issue that you have in business. So if you're watching this and you have a business. Write down all the areas that you're struggling in and Google, is there a book on blank? And yeah. I promise you there is. Um, and then get the book. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, I, yeah, not nah, business has always been been up and down. Um, but learning has always been like the the part that never stops. For sure. For sure. And so the uh, with that being said, like because this is my podcast is around entrepreneurship and stuff. Uh, So what would be a good piece of advice beyond learning and always growing as a entrepreneur? What would be a piece of advice for any new entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs out there? Right. Um, I love metaphors. I love, you know, quotes. This is one of my favorites that I've created and that I share a lot. Learn to appreciate the storms. Learn to appreciate the storms of life so that you can enjoy the rainbow. Meaning that learn to appreciate the struggles, learn to appreciate the failures, learn to appreciate all these different things that from the outside looking in is horrible because that's what's going to help you and be able to see the rainbow after the storm. Because after every rainstorm, there's a rainbow. And a rainbow is the success. Rainbow is the happiness. Rainbow is the money. Rainbow is the impact. The rainbow is all these different things. And you can't actually enjoy the rainbow without actually going through the storm first. Rainbows don't exist without a storm. They don't pop up uh, without some type of weather storm happening prior. So I would just tell people that you're going to have storms in life. You're going to have storms in your business and you have to learn how to appreciate it and you have to learn how to dance through it, like meaning navigate it, right? Navigate these different things, learn from them um, because that's what's going to make you appreciate it. Like the first time that I made money in my business, Mm -hmm. I appreciate all those times I said yes and and had to find ways to make it to events for free. Yeah. I appreciate you know the young people that write me to this day saying that you came to my school last year and I just want to say thank you. This is where I'm at now. I don't know if you remember me. Mm. I appreciate that because I failed so many times at public speaking. I failed so many times at giving a good speech, right? I failed so many times or I made mistakes, right? So that's the advice I would give is and is uh, learn how to dance through the storm so that you can enjoy the rainbow. Man, that uh, that's beautiful. Like that's definitely beautiful. The and thinking about like nature, nature is beautiful. Whether there's a storm out there or you know after the storm clears up, it. Based off of your perspective, you know, you can see the beauty in it. And it, to your point, you have to accept the bad in order to appreciate the good, you know. So yeah. I appreciate that. Now, 
how could we get in contact with you? How could we acquire about your services? How could we book you to come out uh, to our local schools and what have you? What's the best way to yeah. get in contact with and follow you? Yeah, so um, social media is um, everything is, is faith and effort. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. Um, I am working to re rebrand and build up the YouTube channel. So faith and effort on the YouTube channel or type in my name, Samuel Brown. Um, and as far as if you want to inquire about the different services that I have, visit my website, www.faithandeffort.org. Um, you could fill out an inquiry form um, at the bottom of every page or click on the, you know, book now and we can set up a consultation call um, and that'll that'll get you in front of me so that we can uh, create this impact and, and continue to help young people and college students and staff members uh, and adults, everybody grow through what they go through and develop um, themselves to create a life that they want. Nice. Love it. How can I cop a dreamers never die sweater? I, I love Listen, that. Um, yeah. So dreamers never die sweaters. Uh, I'm actually coming out with, uh, I'm working with a new, uh, new manufacturer. So okay, look out for um, spring, summer, 2023. Um, I should have some things up, but right now, uh, you know, this is the winter collection. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. And I'm gonna need you to DM me like, sir, it's it's available. Here, here's the link. Yeah, listen, I got you. I got you. Listen, this, this like you're probably like the 10th person that has asked asked me. So um, it might be a sign to just, you know, drop drop something for them because I I really love the message behind it and I think I got some here. So yeah, I got you for sure. And it's anybody so watching all this, you know, June, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna say June. Come, right. come talk to me and I'm going to have some German Never Die merch. Okay. Sam, I appreciate you joining us today. And I, I'm i going to follow your journey. Anybody that's watching this, definitely follow Sam Brown at Faith and Effort uh, across all social media platforms and faithandeffort.org. Mm -hmm. Correct? Or inquiries. Yep. Sam, I appreciate you joining us. And thank you for being here. Now, I appreciate the time and thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. I'll speak to you later. Take care. All right. Cheers. That will conclude today's episode of the Building a Brand interview podcast series. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for future episodes where we will bring on additional guests to share their journey. Also, share today's episode because there's someone out there that you may or may not know that needs the information in this series. Again, my name is Jeremy Patton, and you have just tuned into the Building a Brand podcast interview series. Until next time, remember, you got this, you just got to keep going.